Ever found yourself being spoiled for choice for melee weapons while being chased down by a horde of zombies? Me neither, but we're gonna be doing a melee's weapons guys anyways. Hey guys, before I get into the video, I'd like to thank you all for the support and for helping the channel surpass the 100 subscriber mark. I truly enjoyed interacting with you guys in the comment sections of the last video, and I've learned a few things myself from you guys, so thank you buddies. In this video, I'll be excluding modded melee weapons as well as miscellaneous items found throughout the world of DayZ and sticking with the recommended vanilla melee list. With that being said, let's get into the melee guide for beginners for Xbox One. So let's start off with a few basic commands to get us warmed up. To perform a light attack, simply hold on the left trigger while tapping the right trigger. Easy enough. To block, hold on the left trigger and pull back on your left analog stick. Performing a heavy attack will require you to sprint and double tap the right trigger. This one's all about timing. And finally to dodge, hold on the left trigger and either tap the left or right bumper keys. Oh, and always aim for the head if you can. And remember, punching hard surfaces will cause your hands to bleed. Starting off the list with an overlooked melee weapon, the basic brass knuckles is an effective close quarters blunt weapon, which is easily concealed from unattentive enemies and can be found in towns and villages. This weapon can deal 13 damage with a normal attack and 17 damage with a heavy attack and a shock damage of 15 for a normal attack and 34 shock damage for heavy attacks. I was pleasantly surprised at the performance of this weapon and was able to dispatch 3 to 4 zombies without being sent back to the coast. There is no other use apart from them being used as a weapon, and they cannot be repaired making them a one trick pony, but they are a better option when compared to bare hands. As a new spawn, a knife is a gift from the daisy gods, but not all knives were created equal, just their uses were. One of the two craftable melee weapons would be the improvised stone knife. The positive thing about knives is that they inflict bleed damage. This knife can deal 10 damage with a normal attack and 13 damage with a heavy attack. The shock damage is 5 for both normal and heavy attacks. It's best to use this knife as a last resort. Sharing the same range as the previous knife, the stake knife along with the knives to follow all share the same damage and shock stats. Dealing 17 damage with a normal attack and 25 damage with a heavy attack. The shock damage is 7 for normal attacks and 12 shock damage for heavy attacks. You will be able to find steak knives in towns and villages as they are pretty common. The same can be said for the kitchen knife. The only difference with the kitchen knife is that it has a minute range advantage over the steak knife and requires one extra slot to carry around. The hunting knife, one of my favorite knives of them all. Even though it shares the same stats as the kitchen knife and the combat knife, this knife provides better quality cuts of meat from animals and is commonly found in hunting stands. There is no distinct advantages when it comes to the combat knife apart from its looks and rarity. This knife allows you and your next victim to admire your looting skills as you dispatch them and is commonly found in military zones. Bigger is always better. The iconic machete doesn't fall short. This blade will not only strike fear in your victim's souls, but it will also be striking 25% damage from a normal attack and 34 damage from a heavy attack with a shock damage of 15 for both normal and heavy attacks, a guaranteed 4 swing kill, and they are commonly found in farm barns. As mentioned before, all knives share the same applications. They allow you to craft rags from clothes, open canned foods, skin and gut animals, and harvest sticks for fire, and not forgetting digging up earthworms for fishing. But the most important attribute about a knife is that it gives you the ability to harvest bark, which is very important for early survival. Really only used by fresh spawns, the screwdriver is a rather poor melee weapon of choice, only dealing 13 damage with a normal attack and 17 damage with a heavy attack, combined with the 10 shock damage of both normal and heavy attacks. The advantages of having this weapon is that you can open up cans of food as well as skin and prepare animals. A fairly common weapon and they can be found in industrial areas. Sticking with the toolbox theme, the hammer outshines the screwdriver when comparing shock damage values, dealing 15 shock damage with a normal attack and 34 shock damage with a heavy attack. Hammers can be found in farms and villages, predominantly used for building, but you can open canned foods with it. Lacking the functionality, the wrench makes up by dealing 17 damage with a normal attack and 25 damage with a heavy attack, and having better range compared to the previous weapon. The shock damage makes it tempting to carry around as a new spawn. Dealing 20 shock damage with a light attack and an impressive 40 shock damage with a heavy attack. But unfortunately the wrench cannot be repaired. You can use them to open canned foods and you can find them in farms and villages. Coming in at 3 kgs and occupying 6 slots we have the lead pipe sharing the exact same stats and abilities as the previous weapon. And only beating it by a smidge when comparing the range stat. 
For a smaller and lighter alternative, the lug wrench would be a wise pick. The only benefit of having a lug wrench over a lead pipe is that it allows you to separate truck tires. Being a common weapon, you'll most likely find them in industrial areas. If you're looking for the best single-handed blunt melee weapon on paper, then the crowbar should fill that slot. A versatile weapon that can open canned goods, gut and prepare animals and dismantle fences makes it a handy tool to keep on hand. To repair a crowbar, simply combine a sharpening stone with it. You can find crowbars in villages and small towns along the coast. If you're after a jack of all trades, then the hatchet is the melee weapon you want. Although the hatchet does admirable damage as a weapon, its real value lies in the ability to perform just about any task. From building to dismantling fences, gutting and preparing animals, to opening cans, as well as crafting rags from clothes. Dealing 25% damage from a normal attack and 34 damage from a heavy attack. The shock damage is 15 for both normal and heavy attack. And the best thing about a hatchet, it can kill with one hit to the head. You can repair hatchets with a sharpening stone and they can be found in towns and villages. The first two-handed melee weapon on this list is the baseball bat. Commonly found in schools and towns, it deals 17 damage with a normal attack and 25 damage with a heavy attack. Given that it is a bigger weapon to carry around, you would expect a higher shock damage figure. With a mere 20 shock damage with a light attack and a 40 damage with a heavy attack, it falls short compared to the other two-handed weapons on this list. A variation of this is the nail bat. As the name suggests, just add nails, 14 to be exact, giving the bat the ability to deal bleed damage. Both variations allow you to open cans, but you will lose up to 80% of the contents from the can. And bats cannot be repaired. Introduced in the 1.10 update, the pipe wrench offers a rather unique angle when it comes to damage stats. Expect 20 health and blood damage from a normal attack and a staggering 100 shock damage with an average range from this weapon. You are most likely to find this uncommon weapon in tool sheds. It will also offer you the ability to repair car engines to pristine condition. Often overlooked for its size at 14 slots and a weight of 1 kg, the pickaxe deals some of the highest amounts of damage in melee combat. Acting as a bladed weapon dealing 34 health damage with normal attacks and 55 damage with heavy attacks. Having the highest range stats, you will be dealing 100 blood damage and 20 shock damage from both normal and heavy attacks. With this weapon, you'll be able to construct and dismantle fences, digging up worms and creating garden plots, as well as opening cans and mining rocks. You are most likely to find these on the coast. The bigger brother of the hatchet would be the splitting axe. Sharing the same attributes as the hatchet, the splitting axe only lacks the ability to build, but makes up for it with high damage and range. Taking up 12 slots and weighing 1 kg, it deals 34 health damage, 100 blood damage and 15 shock damage with a normal attack, and 55 health damage as well as 20 shock damage with a heavy attack. Being a bladed weapon, you'll also cause bleed damage. The splitting axe is a true contender for the best melee weapon in the game. You can find them in villages and they are very common. Taking up two more slots and having three different color schemes, the firefighter's axe shares the same abilities and stats as the splitting axe on paper. I barely felt a difference between the two of them when using them, but I could be totally wrong. The heavyweight of the melee world has to be the shovel. Occupying 16 slots and weighing in at 6 kgs, performing as a blunt melee weapon, the shovel does 25 damage with 50 shock damage when using light attacks and 34 health damage with 100 shock damage with heavy attacks. They are fairly common and can be found in sheds and farms. The shovel has a host of uses, including bearing bodies to hide your trail from others, hiding your epic loot, digging up worms, building a fence or a watchtower, and laying a garden plot as well as removing them. The only downside with the shovel is that they cannot be repaired. Identical stats when compared to the shovel. The sledgehammer requires only 12 slots and weighs in at 5 kgs. A formidable melee weapon for blocking, with high durability makes it an easy pick when it comes to base raiding and dealing with angry zombies. They cannot be repaired but they are fairly common and can be found in sheds. Sledgehammers allow you to mine large rocks as well as erect flagpole bases. Oh, and one more thing, if you see a can in someone's hands, run, just run, you'll thank me later. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something new from it. Let me know in the comment sections which is your go-to melee weapon and why. And I'll catch you in the next one.